just going to do a quick little instructional video, it may not be quick, I don't know, about how to fillet, uh, well, we're going to descale and fillet uh, a couple whiting here so you can see how, it, how I do it. I'm sure there's more ways to do it, but here is how I do it. And uh, first of all, the most important thing here is I've got a fillet knife I got from Walmart. This thing works really great. Um, I've got a descaler. This thing was only a couple bucks. We put it in the dishwasher and uh, so it's kind of discolored. I don't think you're supposed to put that in the dishwasher. And extremely important, this little thing, I think it was six or seven dollars, but you always want to keep your fillet knife very, very sharp. So um, about every two fish, I'm uh, sharpening up my knife four or five times on each side and it makes a huge difference in how quickly and easily you're able to, um, to do the fish. So what I like to do first, I'm gonna descale it. Um, and yeah, I probably should have changed before I do this. Hopefully I won't get fish scales and guts all over myself, but um, this it goes pretty easily. I actually know someone who descales it with their, with their hose. If you put on your, your hose when you're cleaning off all your fishing equipment, you can actually just spray the fish really, really hard. The opposite direction of the scales go against the, the direction of the scales and it will actually take the, sc the scales right off the fish. But anyways, this is kind of messy. I've done it outside and then end up with like a pile of scales in my yard before, which probably isn't the best approach either. But anyways, here is, I usually do this in the sink so I can easily put all the scales down in the sink, but just, to be able to show you guys, I try to get them all off, especially close up by the backbone here because this is where we're gonna be going down with a fillet knife. You don't have to descale it, but I have found that if you descale it first, that fillet knife just goes right through there so much easier. All right, so filleting it, and I might move this camera another direction, uh, get it from another direction here in a little bit um, when I do the next one, in case you can't see it too well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut, I don't know if you can see this fish here, I'm gonna cut up here behind this fin, up toward the head, and then I'm just gonna walk you through it and then I'll do it, um, make a cut here, and then I'm gonna cut all the way down the backbone, and then kind of come through, and then back up the side, and then we're gonna flip it and do the other way. So. It's easier for me if I do it this way. So I'm just gonna cut down here. Sometimes I just cut down into the belly to make it a little easier at the end. So now this, I'm coming down horizontally all the way down and my knife is nice and sharp so it's going right straight through, right along that backbone because the further you get away from that backbone, uh, the more meat you're gonna miss. And believe me, it took me a while to get this. I'm actually on the other side of the backbone here, which you can easily do if you feel for the bones. And I think part of the problem is this fish is a little bit frozen, still in the middle. I just took these out of the freezer a little bit ago. So, so what I like to do is, if you can see here, I stick that right through and then come down. You, have a, you want to have a little bit of a downward motion as you're coming down so that you don't miss any of the meat. If you can see here, I'm right up pretty close to that backbone. There might be a tiny bit of meat there that I missed, but not much. So then I just come the other way and uh, yeah, it's still all frozen. So it's going to be a little more difficult to get it through. I thought it was thought it was totally defrosted, but it's not. <laughs> I've got a skinnier, a smaller one that is defrosted. So we're just gonna power through that. Now, as you can see, here we've got this filet, but we've got the rib cage here. You can see the ribs. This is still frozen. I can see where that's frozen. And I'm gonna cut out this rib cage. It's kind of hard to do with it being frozen. And I'm missing some meat there, but you know, it is what it is. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So, and this gets quicker every time you do it. And especially if it's not frozen. <laughs> so, right down the backbone. 
follow the backbone. Try not to get the fin in there. Sometimes you can't help it. And I'll just cut that off after. Then I'm gonna cut this off the body. And then I'm gonna remove those rib cages. So as you can see, I'm just gonna cut off this there, and I'm gonna cut off the, um, the rib cage. This is where the biggest bones are anyways. You don't want those bones. Okay, so we've got these two fillets here. Not too bad of size. Now, some people will cook this and they'll, they'll crisp up the, the skin and they will go ahead and eat the skin. I like to remove the skin because I would just like to blacken it on both sides or I like to fry it. So what I'm gonna do, um, I don't know if you can see it too well, but I'm gonna kind of cut down into this meat. Don't go all the way through it, that's very important. And then I'm gonna be taking this horizontally um, between the meat and the skin. And this takes a little bit of practice. So if you don't get it right the first time, I don't even get it right every time. Sometimes there's still some, some uh, skin left on there and I have to just get that off. So we're gonna try. But you can, it does actually help when the scales are on there, it kind of grips the, the wood. You're just kind of going between the skin and the meat. I think I got it pretty well. So there is a little bloodline there. Um, but that's, it should be okay. That is not a big deal. I can feel some bones, but these kind of bones, if I cut them out, I'm gonna probably end up cutting a lot of meat out. So I'm gonna leave those alone. I'm gonna do the same to this one. Just gonna try to grab the meat and not the skin. All right. Perfect. So I barely got any skin on these fillets. We've got two really nice whiting fillets. It's gonna taste really good. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna move the camera to another, um, kind of to the side here so you can see it from another uh, perspective before I go on to the next one. All right, now we're gonna try it from this angle. So I went ahead and I sharpened my knife again and I have already descaled all of these fish. <laughs> like I did before, I'm gonna make this cut right behind the head, right behind this fin. Take it down into the stomach. Now, some people gut these fish right at the beach. They'll take the guts out. I have not gotten into doing that yet. Um, I have, as you can see, I cut the gills to bleed them out. And that's really important to keep the quality of the meat. I do have, oh, I think it's the one I just did. So we'll see the difference in the color of the meat from that one because I didn't bleed it out and these uh, other four fish that I did bleed out. And I'm not gonna do all four fish on the video, don't worry. So just cutting down, that's not the cleanest cut. But then like I did before, I'm gonna come right through here, downward motion to get all the way down to the tail. And then we're gonna come right back up through. All right, not too shabby. Other side, same thing. Cut behind the fin, behind the head, all the way. Now we're getting a few scales that got left behind, as you can see on my knife, but not too many. When, when you don't descale it, you'll, you'll notice a huge difference of the knife tip getting caught up on the scales. I don't like that, so I just descale it. So going through, downward motion. I'm gonna cut back up through here. I try to lift this a little bit. I don't know if you've noticed with my thumb, I'm lifting this up because if you don't, sometimes as you're coming back up, you're gonna cut through the meat and then you've severed some of the best part of the meat and it's not really usable at that point unless you're frying it. And then again, we are going to take the skin off. So, so I come here where the meat's a little bit thicker and go under and you're really just horizontal with the board kind of coming right through. These are actually working out really well today for the most part. Oh, and I forgot to take out the rib cage and I can still do that. So you see this, there's like a little bit of a difference. I'll hold it up to the camera. You can see the difference in the meat here. This is the rib cage here and there is, you can see the bones, boom, boom, boom. So we're gonna cut right behind those to get those bigger bones out. There'll be some other smaller 
pin bones. Ah, okay. Usually I'm doing that before I take the skin off, so this kind of messed up the meat because I was putting all that pressure on it. But here we go, and you can actually see, let me take the, uh, let me do this one, and you can see the difference between those two fillets like I was talking about. So I took the rib cage out of that one, and then we're gonna cut the skin off here. Right between the skin and the meat. These are actually behaving very nicely today. Okay, so here's these two fish that we filleted, that I filleted. Um, here's the one that was not bled out. Here's the ones that I bled out. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I can. These have more of a pinkish hue in them, and these are have more white. So we've gotten more of the blood out of these. So that's why it's really good to, to bleed out the fish um, if you can, right on the beach, cut through the gills and put it in a bucket with some uh, just ocean water. Just put ocean water in the bucket, let it bleed out for maybe five minutes and then get it right on some ice. So hope that was helpful to catch you later guys, bye. filet of fish here, not to be confused with McDonald's filet of fish which probably isn't even real fish. It might be like 10% fish and 90% something else. <laughs>